Hey everyone, it's Max with Lunar Replicas and Astro Vet Endeavor with Al Warden's Apollo 15 Corvette. Today is actually July 30th. It's the day that Apollo 15 landed on the moon and Al stayed up in the command module. And if you read his books, uh, you can, he talks a lot about that. But in any case, I want to talk about a little bit of an update. So we had the brake rotors taken to the machine shop to see if we could lay it out and use the original rotors. Unfortunately, they do not pass because uh, they're below the minimum thickness. In this case, 1.215 inches. So they're a little bit too thin. They've been lathed before. Um, so we're actually gonna save them as is. They're not going to put them back on the car, but we're gonna save them with the car. And we'll put reproduction front hubs and rotors on the front. So I'm gonna do that right now. See if maybe we could put new brakes as well because the, uh, the old calipers turned out to be also not original. So new hubs, rotors, calipers, some lines, and then maybe we'll put the wheels back on and roll the car out, see what we can do, make sure uh, we get um, brake fluid to all four corners. So let's take a look. So as you can see, we've cleaned up the front spindle here on Al's Corvette. This is the passenger side. The incorrect, but we rebuilt them anyway, uh, calipers are sitting here. They're, they're um, hanging down over here. Um, just to open up the box, this is the front rotor from CSSB, and it includes even rivet holes. So we're not going to use them again. Um, when you tighten this up on the, on the hub, here's the new hub from Zip Corvette. Just gonna get the bearings and stuff in place here and then put this onto the spindle. Um, there's a castle nut that you tighten down and there's a certain spec to that. Once this is on and the rotor is mated to the hub, when the wheel goes on, it stays centered because of the, uh, the lug nuts. So really the rivets are not necessary anymore. But um, yeah, let's get started. Okay. So what we're gonna do first is actually we're gonna pack these bearings with the correct grease and then fit the bearing into bearing and seal. Right there you have that oil seal. Fit that right into the inner portion of this hub. Put that there. Let me get some gloves and paper towel. I'm going to do this the old fashioned way. And the way to do that is simply getting some rubber gloves here. we're trying to do is get grease all inside around all these rollers and through the top here and it's as simple as you put you take a glob of grease put it in your palm take this and you just smack it all the way around so you see grease come out the top of the bearing they're open at the bottom come out the top and these are Timken bearings the best all right now, just go to town. This is messy, and you will get grease everywhere if you're not too careful. And don't worry about putting too much on. You can always take some off, but you want to make sure that it gets all the way in there. So you see, just pulling it out here. Slap, slap, slap. See, it starts coming up through the top there. That's exactly how you pack a bearing. Now, they make tools for this where you just put the bearing, see it's coming out the top. That's all you want, and move on. Just move, you just do it an inch at a time. Get a little bit more on my... There we go. And 
that's all the way around. That's all it takes. Now, they, again, they have machines, you know, a, a press or something. You can stick this in and then just you push down and it goes through the whole thing. That's fine. Uh, I prefer doing it this way so that you know you're covering all of the bearings. Uh, if this runs dry, you really don't want any of this to run dry. So coat the outside now. Just give it a good once around. And we're just going to drop it into the spindle. Or I'm sorry, into the hub right there. That's all you got to do. Now, while my hands are dirty like this, I will do the outer one. And I might even do the other set so that we'll have both sides done. And uh, we'll be right back. All right, so we have everything greased up. We're going to use now a, this is actually a bearing insert hammer tool. I, I don't know what it's called. It's a bearing setting tool, I guess, bearing and races and stuff. We're going to use that to set the oil seal. Uh, you can just use a hammer or if you have a large enough socket or something, or if you have a punch, you can just go around the edges. But this does it all in one. And you want to find the one that fits, and then... Okay. Um, let's set that in a little bit more. I might use a smaller size, but that's basically it. It gets set in there like that, with the lip facing inwards. And then we'll do the other one. Look up the spec for tightening the castle nut down on the outside of the spindle once the outer bearing goes in and then these will be done there it is the inner bearings and the oil seal in place and these are the outer bearings that's going to go in and then the washer castle nut and cotter pin and then the cover on the outside so now we are going to put the spindle on torque it down uh, you torque to 12 pounds just so that you load those bearings and make sure they're actually touching the races and everything uh, and then you back it off actually when we're, we're going to kind of do this by feel a little bit some guys just do it by feel but the manual tells you 12 pounds so this goes on right there there we go and then the outer bearing put that on right there okay and we have our castle nut and washer the washer has a slot in it the washer goes into the slot and then the castle nut right on top all right and this is a one and a quarter inch socket that goes on here put it on the trusty old torque wrench we're just going to spin this for now okay all right so we're at that point now you're also going to have to get a cotter pin in here, so note where your cotter pin holes are on the spindle, and they're about 45 degree angle, like right there, on this side. I'm, I'm not sure what it is on the other side, but I can see this one right here. So once we tighten this up, we're then going to loosen, double check the play, and then find, you know, you loosen to the nearest cotter pin hole. These should be tight, but they shouldn't be binding. You know, if it's binding this thing up, then you're going to have excessive wear. Uh, and then, it, you know, these are supposed to spin freely. All right, so we're looking at 12 pounds. Oh, we've got to restart that. Oh. Okay, 12 foot-pounds. There we go. Now you see it's a little tight, it's binding. So now we're gonna just back it off a little. Still binding a little bit. Let's, let's play with this a little. We'll go another, another flat.
that's too much okay so let's let's do another 12 pounds and then we'll back it off from there okay so i've gone to 12 foot pounds on the nut here and then backed it off so it's about one flat to back it off to the nearest pinhole cotter pinhole and then i threw the brake rotor on here and he's just you know, now that it's not riveted, it just goes right on. And I'm checking the play to see if there's any play in the hub now. Come on. Now, I guess I put a couple of lug nuts on. Okay. See how it spins. I see that's pretty good. Let me back it off a little bit more. Should have a tiny bit of play. Let's spin this. Yeah, see the old way to do it was you spin it, tighten it while you're spinning it, and then back it off. And I'll bet you that's pretty much there. Right there. Too much play. Let's up it just enough. Yep, we'll go to this flat right here. A little bit of an art to this, but not too difficult. Tight, but not too tight. Okay, then all there is to it is put the cotter pin in. You can cut it or you, know, you bend it and can either wrap it around the nut or cut it after you bend it. In this case, I usually wrap it around. one up this way and that's done now we just put the cover back on cover goes on like so and we use our trusty hammer as Adam Savage says every tool is a hammer so we'll go with that Passenger side hub install is done. Now, we just need to go towards putting the new brake caliper on. So we're now at the point of removing the old caliper and brake line, uh, the hose line. I have pre-installed 
the new hose onto the new caliper. And uh, I think we're ready to go. I've got all the hardware and stuff ready. This is gonna go in like this. And I probably should get the pads on here as well because I can probably do that all in one in one take here. Let me do that. I'll put the pads on. We're actually going to hang the caliper first. Why don't I see about putting the caliper on the rotor first and then I'll deal with the brake line because that threads in over there. This just clips on into the mount and then the hard line threads into the top. So let me see about doing this first. If I can get the old caliper out of the way, I'll be able to do that. Let's try that first. Oh, uh, very important actually, before anything, let's clean the brake rotor off. Very important to do this obviously in a ventilated space, but take some brake rotor cleaner here, uh, trusty brake clean. have that's one side you can see they do need to be cleaned they have oil on them to prevent rusting while they're in the box and there is a slot on this side where we can put a little bit on there and then just spin it do that a couple times oof And of course you can do this before you put them on, but this is just as easy. Okay, let's clean, we'll give the outside one more shot. Okay. Now we'll try putting the new caliper on. Just to get this out of the way. Something really important is putting anti-seize on the mounting bolts here, just so that the two bolts that mount this to the spindle always have a little bit. They will have to come off from time to time because that's how you change the pads out. You can change the pads on these from the top, but it's very difficult. So this is easier to do. Put some never seize on here get those ready to go just like grease once you get never see once you open the never sees bottle it gets everywhere and it never comes out of your clothes either okay so we have pads here let's see are these the fronts Oh, they're only fronts, no. Which ones are the rears, which ones are the fronts? I guess they're the same. They are the same, or at least two sets of the same thing.
And these are the semi-metallic ones. Uh, I think from GM they came with organic, what they call organic brake pads. But these are semi-metallic. I have read that these work really quite well. So I'll throw these on. And it's as simple as opening this or closing this cotter pin up. Pulling this through and then sliding these pads on. That's all there is to it. Now I'm going to leave this cotter pin relatively loose so that if we do have to take it apart, we can. Right here is what we're looking at, just like that. Slide this on top of the rotor. Might have to take the brake off. Okay, change of plans. The old caliper is going to have to come off. And that just means there's going to be a little dribble of brake fluid out of the line here for a couple minutes. And hopefully, with the master cylinder cap on, it sh there shouldn't be too much that comes out. Always wear gloves at this stage because. Brake fluid is not nice stuff. And it will hurt you and paint and anything else that it touches. Okay, oh, there's nothing coming out. Okay, that's a good sign. Old caliper out. Get those bolts ready. New caliper coming in. Right there. This is a bolt and lock washer. Thread in through here. Presser just came on. tight. Let's get the other one.
All right, so this clip goes on right here. It's a metal clip where the brake line comes in. Literally just clips right there. Just push it in with a screwdriver. Maybe a hammer or hammer substitute. Make sure that it's on there. And then thread your brake line connection right there. You want to make sure it threads and then tighten it down. Be right back. All right, the rotors are in now. Need a little bit of help getting those bolts started. Let's put the brake line on all the way. So the caliper is now on all the way. Need a little help with the getting the bolts started on the back end, but the caliper, rotor, and pads are all in place. I just have these lug nuts here just holding everything in place for now. And now we'll get the brake line finished. And that's on. All right, this needs to be torqued to 70 pounds. Okay, bring the torque wrench up, 70, 60, 70. Okay, really important that these get torqued down. Obviously this is how your car stops. And it is a 5 eighths inch socket. It's an awkward position to do this in. I might need an extender. Almost. Got it. And the lower one's easier. Got it. Okay. So let's put the driver's side on. And then we'll come back and we'll bleed the brakes. So we got the fronts done up and here's a look at the rears before putting the new calipers and rotors on. And here's kind of a before and after. Check that out. That looks amazing. Turned out really well. The rears are a little bit easier because they don't have to deal with a spindle and a hub. But um, everything went together really well. Huge shout out to CSSB and Zip Corvette for their amazing parts. And uh, tune in next time, projectastrovet.com.